Okay, we're taxiing out to runway 32 from the hangars. Got our weather. Wind is 330 at 8, so pretty much straight down the runway, no big deal. Just thought we'd practice with the camera a little bit today and maybe do something useful and uh, kind of help somebody else out. So what we're going to do today is just uh, pretty much a normal takeoff and climb out. And uh, we'll go up to, I don't know, 3,000, 3,500 feet, something like that, depending on where the traffic is. And uh, just go through a couple basic uh, fundamentals of flying the airplane, making sure we understand the relationship of a pitch to airspeed and our power settings uh, for altitude. You probably heard somebody say it before, you know, it's pitch plus performance, or sorry, pitch plus power equals performance. And what we mean by that is we're constantly moving the pitch attitude of the airplane to manipulate how much drag we have, which effectively controls our airspeed. And then we use power to either give us altitude or take altitude away, other than in our main, you know, when we're cruising cross-country setup and we pretty much got it all the way forward because we want to get to where we're going. For the most part, we're controlling the airspeed with the pitch attitude, which is a lot different than when we drive a car, when we control our speed with how much throttle we give it. So uh, in the plane, we don't do that. It's kind of the opposite of what we're used to. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you today, and we'll uh, look at that relationship. I also want to show you uh, some ways to make sure that you have the airplane trimmed correctly. I find a lot of new pilots tend to misunderstand what the trim is for. I've heard people call it you know, the poor man's autopilot or things like that. That's really just not what it's for. The purpose of the trim is to uh, set the control wheel pressure so that you don't have to do as much as the pilot as far as inputs in and out to the system. And when we set that trim by moving the wheel up or down, that trim tab that's back there on the elevator or the stabilator, if you're out there flying in a Piper or something like that, is, uh, is always trimmed for a specific air speed. So if I make a change to my power setting, the airplane's going to either go up or down based on that, but eventually it's going to settle right back down in a new attitude at the same airspeed because it's trimmed for that airspeed. So I'm going to show you how to get it set up for that, and uh, then we'll do a couple exercises where we don't change the uh, pitch of the airplane very much. Uh, but we do change the power, so we'll, we'll see what the trim does, and you'll see when I change the power, the nose wants to sort of oscillate a little bit there until it finds its new equilibrium. So, city traffic, uh, got about three airplanes up here in the run-up area, it looks like, so a little bit busy this, this afternoon, but that's okay. It'll give us some time to go through our run-up and, uh, and get ready. So, for now, we'll just keep it on the taxi line. And uh, another trick for those of you that are new to the piloting game is that uh, you're not sitting in the middle of the airplane. We're actually sitting over here on the left side or maybe over there on the right side. And uh, because of that, you're actually looking at an angle. They call it a parallax view. And so what you want to do is position the airplane so it looks from your point of view as if that line out there is going through your legs. Because if it does, then it probably looks to your passenger over there like it's going through their legs. And the reality is... It's pretty much in the middle of the airplane, so okay, a good uh, habit to kind of get into. Delta Bravo is about two miles to the east, uh, 3,500 feet descending. We'll be uh, crossing over midfield to left downwind runway 32. Okay, so we got uh, one on the way in, one just took off, one on the runway, one uh, another one here in front of us in the run-up area. We'll go through our run-up together real quick, and we'll take off. So, got a sky lane there and a sky lane here. My kind of day. So as I do my turnaround here, I'm looking up and out for any potential collision error, uh, sorry, collision avoidance, you know, traffic, kind of stuff like that. Have the city traffic lights here, so it's departed runway 32. We're uh, nice to look at the uh, sky in there behind the diamond. Okay, I'm going to come to a full stop now. When I do, I'm going to set my parking brake. And we'll go through a control check. So uh, I like to pull the controls all the way to the stop and then all the way to the stop like and the ailerons too. And you can also check your rigging. Thumbs up, that side aileron should be up. So just remember, thumbs up, ailerons up. And I have full range of motion in my control, so they're good to go. I'm going to set my flaps for 20 today for takeoff. So I got that done now. And I go gas is on both tanks. All flaps are open. My rudder and uh, elevator trim are set for takeoff. I'm going to go ahead and push my mixture all the way forward. I had it leaned out for a while I was taxiing because that's a little more fuel than the engine actually needs. I'm going to push the power up now to about 17, 1800 RPM. This is all in accordance with the POH and the checklist. Okay, so I got my power setting where I wanted there. And I like to keep my elevators just slightly around the neutral or maybe just after the neutral position uh, just to keep the plane from bouncing so much. I'm going to take my mag here and I'm going to go from the both to left. And when I do that, it's taking half of my spark plugs away by eliminating one of those magnetos. 
So it has the same effect as retarding the ignition timing, which means I'm going to see a slight drop in RPM, which I did, and I should see a climb in the exhaust gas temperatures there, which I am seeing, and that's because we're burning that mixture later and later. So I'm going to go back to both. What I should see is the EGTs drop, the RPMs come back up. Now I'm going to test the other side, the right side. Get a slight drop you want. You don't know more than about a maybe 100 or 150 RPM max drop there. And about the same from either side. So we know both mags are performing the same. EGT is climbing. So I come back to both. Now that lets us know that in the event that one or the other mags fail, we still have a pretty good chance of getting home. All right. So gauges, my airspeed, my vacuum, I got traffic, my turn coordinator, both my altimeters, both my attitude indicators, my heading indicator matches my compass, my vertical speed looks good. So engine gauges, I got about 30 gallons of fuel on board today, so roughly a third of what I can uh, use. My cylinder head temp is in the green, oil temp is just getting up to the green, and my oil pressure is pretty high because that oil is cold. But one last thing I'm going to do is check the prop governor, which a lot of training airplanes don't have, but since we do, we're going to go ahead and check, check it. Now I got to move the engine power up enough to get into the governing range to do that. So I'm going to push the power up to around 2,000 or so, and when I pull that prop uh, governor lever out, it's going to want to rotate those propeller blades and, and pull the engine down. So I want to make sure that that works before I go out on the runway and get to full power. So here we go. I'm going to push the power up. I'm going to do this three times. That's one, it pulled it right down. I let it recover. Two and three. Now what I'm looking for is that A, the prop governor does in fact reduce the engine speed. But you should also see a corresponding change in manifold pressure and fuel flow when that happens, as well as a little tweak in your oil pressure there as you're using the engine oil pressure to move that governor. So uh, in that case, all three of those worked, and that's what I do personally. Each of the three times I do it, I look here, then I look here, then I look here, so that I know it's working well. Okay, so trim and flaps are set for takeoff. I got gas, undercarriage, mixture props, seat belts, and my switches. That's my beacon strobe, taxi, and landing lights are all on, ready for takeoff. I'm going to release my park and brake here. Have a few traffic, Bonanza 83 Romeo's. Uh, Six miles west. Okay. Three thousand nine hundred uh, descending. Looking for the traffic. It looks like you guys are uh, gonna pass me to my north. I'll be south of you. All right. So what we're gonna do when we get out on the runway is I like to check the windsock and check the runway heading that's painted on the runway. Make sure it lines up with my heading indicator and my compass. So we're going to set the brakes, we're going to slowly advance the power all the way to full power, and this is just kind of be a normal takeoff today, and for us that means we're going to rotate somewhere around 45 knots or so, and we'll pitch for 65 or 70 on the way out, and I'll explain as we uh, reduce the flap settings from 20 to 10 to 0 what's, what's going to happen and what you would expect. So we're going to hold short here. Have a few traffic, Skyline 74 Tango Papa is holding short runway 32, and uh, we'll be departing runway 32 for a left turnout. Any traffic on base or final? Okay, so we have no traffic. We're going to go ahead and go. Traffic, Romeo, we're on 45 for a left turnout. Okay, so we're rolling out here. Sound like there's two guys out there chit-chatting over the top of each other. Now I like to come over here to the right instead of following that line and use up all of my available runway because I have a problem. Any of the runway that I left behind me shortcutting, it won't be able to help me. So I like to use all the runway. So wind sock is checked pretty much straight down the runway. I got three two numbers on the runway. That matches here and here. Okay, doors and windows are locked. We're ready to go. So I'm going to slowly advance that power, and as I do, my control wheel is kind of coming back towards me to that at least uh, neutral, neutral elevator position. Okay, so our takeoff power is set. I got that here. Our gauges are all still green. I'm happy with that. And my airspeed's alive, so I know we're doing good. There's my 45 knots, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate. 3 2 out of 2. And just kind of a nice, easy, normal climb out. I got a helicopter over here. Lake Hampton Traffic Helicopter 616 Romeo is departing from midfield westbound uh, 1,000 feet. And if I have the airplane trimmed 
properly, I should be able to pretty much just let go and nothing exciting or dramatic happens. So as we're climbing out, I'm at pretty high power setting and relatively high angle of attack here. So it takes a lot of right rudder to overcome that. If I let go of that rudder, you can see the nose wants to swing out there. So all I'm gonna do is look down at my turn coordinator, I'm gonna make sure that ball is centered. Down downwind uh, beam, the uh, number three, two, uh, have a few. So now, I'm climbing pretty good, I'm happy with everything, so I'm going to go ahead and take my flaps from a setting of 20 to 10. Now when I do that and those flaps retract, it's going to make a little bit less lift and get rid of some of my drag. So between the airplane accelerating and getting more airflow over the wings and taking that uh, extra lift away, you're going to see the nose is initially going to want to drop and then it's going to want to come back up. But what I'm going to do, there it says dropping, I'm going to just put enough back pressure on the yoke here to hold it so I don't end up nose down. I don't want to do this big roller coaster ride. So just enough, and then when I feel that nose start to come back up, now I can kind of start relaxing that back pressure there. So I'm climbing through 1,800. I'm going to go ahead and get my taxi the landing lights out. I'm going to do the same thing and go flaps 10. Now, if I don't do anything, look at the horizon. Whoa, it's like we're on a roller coaster. That nose really dive bombs on me. So I'm going to prevent that from happening have to to by adding enough back response. pressure. Not pulling back, not yanking back, just adding back pressure so that that doesn't happen. Have to traffic, Skyline 7-4, Tango Papa is left crosswind. We're climbing through 2,100 feet. We'll be departing a southwest bound like Havasu. Okay, climb checklist. So taxi line lights are out. My gas is on both. My power setting, I'm going to stay at full throttle, but what I'm going to do at this point is start rolling my throttle back, not my throttle, my prop control back, so that I'm not just climbing at redline RPM the whole time and maxing this thing out. I'm happy with the uh, top of the green arc there, about 2400-ish or something. And then I can also start to reduce the fuel mixture. And notice the whole time I'm flying, I'm pretty much uh, looking outside, looking for traffic. Okay, so somewhere around 18 gallons per hour there will work pretty good for us. Climbing through 2,600 now. Now notice, I have not changed my throttle, and I really haven't done a whole lot to my trim. I did tweak it there just a little to, to uh, give myself a little bit of vision over the nose there. If you find yourself climbing such that the nose is so high you can't see over it, then just kind of add some forward pressure on the oak till you can, and then trim that pressure off. Now. What I mean by trimming the pressure off, I'll show you here in a minute. So we're coming up on 3,000 feet, and I want to stay at 3,000 feet. So what I'm going to have to do is push the nose forward, not down, but level with the horizon. Now when I do that, the airplane begins to accelerate because I don't have all that drag that I had exposing that whole aircraft structure to the wind. So that's great. The only problem is, as the airplane accelerates, it generates more lift. When it generates more lift, well, then it wants to climb. So i got to keep adding more and more uh, forward pressure there so that I can hold my altitude. You can see it's about 45 or 50 feet high. So I'm just going to have to keep adding forward pressure there. So the reason that we have the trim wheel is to prevent us from flying all day having to hold this forward pressure. So you should be able to see a relationship. If I look all the way out there on the horizon to the basically the dashboard or the windshield here, if you want to call it that, and uh, what we want is for that relationship here to stay pretty constant. So right now I'm holding a fair amount of pressure forward on the yoke to hold my altitude. If you can stop that needle with pressure on the yoke, either forwards or backwards, then you're doing good. Now the goal is to be able to do that without me doing so much effort. So watch what happens. If I take my hand off the yoke right now, we got this area here where I can see out the window. I can see that horizon and I can see my dash. So we've got so much airspeed built up here doing 130 knots that if I take my hands off, boom, that nose pops right up and starts heading for heaven. So here we go. But I didn't want to climb, so I'm going to push that nose back forward again. Not so hard that my uh, passengers feel zero Gs and want to throw up there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that horizon as a reference for me. So I'm going to let my airspeed build back up because what happened there is as it started climbing, ooh, it was dragging that airspeed down on me, and eventually that's going to want to, you know, we're going to have to pay the tab on that. So here we are now at 3,200. My airspeed's built back up, and I'm purposely making sure that now I hold the forward pressure on the yoke so that it doesn't climb on me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the trim wheel and I'm going to roll it forward just a little bit at a time. Now the ones in Cessnas have a disc with little balls on it. And I like to think about how many balls, one ball, two ball, three balls, that I've rotated that. 
And then each time I do, I can actually feel that it takes less forward pressure to hold that altitude. Now if I want to check and see if I have a trend right, what I'm going to do is just momentarily let go and watch the horizon. Okay, so it starts to come up. Not as much as it was before, but that just means I'm not all the way trimmed. So I'm going to just sneak a little bit more trim in there. And each time I do, I can take my hands. Now the airplane's pretty happy, and I can much easier uh, have a much easier time controlling my altitude instead of chasing it with the trim all the time. The trim is all about reducing and managing that control pressure. So now the airplane is trimmed for about 130 knots or so. As you see, that's indicated. That's not our true airspeed. We'll talk about that in a later date. But my altitude's holding pretty steady there. So what happens is if I make a change to the power setting, well, that's going to affect my altitude. The airplane's going to want to stay at this 130 knot range here. So right now I've got about 26 inches of manifold pressure and about 2400 RPM. Now my prop governor is controlling the RPM. So if I put in less power or more power or make changes, it simply changes the pitch of the propeller like a dyno would do holding an engine to keep the RPMs the same. So I'm going to go from 26 inches here, and I'm going to slowly pull the throttle back to about, I don't know, 18 or 19 inches, somewhere right in there. It looks like just about a tick over 18 inches. Now, immediately the nose wants to go down because I don't have enough power to hold me there anymore. So I'm going to uh, allow that to happen here for a second and uh, turn away from this rising terrain just for a minute here, and we'll keep on going. So what we're going to see is now the airplane's pretty uh, pretty stable. It's trying to get that nose down and get me back to that 130 knots. And if I just don't do anything, I got my hands off. There's 130, and as we exceed 130, we're losing about oh 1,200 feet a minute or something. And so as I exceed 130, that nose now just slowly starting to come back up because it's making more lift than it was at 130. We're at 136, 137. And I've now set my aircraft so that it's still trimmed the same way it was, except now I'm at a roughly 800 to 1,000 foot per minute descent rate just by managing my power. So if I want to stop that descent rate, what I'm going to do is push this power back up, let's say, to 22 inches. So, look, I'm not doing very much. It's not on autopilot, but I have it trimmed such that it's easy for the airplane to stay at that airspeed, but now I'm only doing about 300 or 400 feet per minute. If I want to go back to the setting that I originally started at, I just put my power back where I originally started at. The airplane will seek that its own uh, trim there. So I'm going to make a little bit of a turn here. Again, just kind of going towards a little bit lower terrain for us, as you can see out there. But the airplane's pretty happy with that trim setting. So now all I got to do is manage my altitude by taking power out or putting power back in. I can climb or descend uh, however I want. So if I want to retrim the airplane for a different airspeed, all I would do is manage my, hold my altitude and manage my power until the airplane slows down. Because what's going to happen is in order to maintain that altitude, if I take the power away, I'm going to have to pitch the nose up and increase my angle of attack so that I make uh, the same amount of total lift as I was making before, except this time I would be doing it by pitching up and increasing the angle of attack instead of purely just with air speed. But what would happen is as I hold my altitude and I reduce that power, I'm going to start flying slower and slower and slower. So at some point, I could reach down and move that trim wheel down until I could do the same thing. I could take my hands off and nothing happens, and then I'm trimmed for level flight at a different nose attitude, at a different airspeed, but I can still add power to climb and reduce power to descend. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Now the other thing I want to talk about a little bit is how you change the pitch attitude of the airplane to maintain an altitude or an airspeed while you're turning. So you may or may not know that what makes the airplane turn is lift. So when we're straight and level, and we're not climbing or descending or speeding up or slowing down, then the total amount of lift that we're making is equal to effectively the weight of the airplane. So we're at 1G. So what happens is when I bank the airplane, when I roll it about the longitudinal axis and tilt the airplane, the, the lift that the wings are generating is always perpendicular to the wing surface. So imagine this was the wing surface. The lift is like this. So if I roll the airplane to the right like this, some of my lift is pointing in that direction, so the heading begins to change in that direction. 
The only problem is that now I'm dividing the lift that I had, some of it vertically to hold the airplane up, and some of it horizontally to make the airplane turn. If I want to turn without losing any altitude, that means I'm going to have to create more lift during the turn so that I still have the same amount of vertical lift and I've got horizontal lift. Um, so my absolute total amount of lift will be greater, but the vertical lift will stay the same so I don't lose any altitude. Now you can do that a couple of ways. One, as I'm pitching or sorry, rolling the airplane, I can increase a little bit of back pressure and bring that nose up. Have it traffic down or two, I can add a little bit of power if I had it available. If I was already flying at full power, I don't really have that as an option, so I've got to use the nose as pitch to do that. So the way that I know if I'm succeeding in that is just like before when I was showing you the trim, I like to use the horizon out there. So if you watch the horizon, let's pick the horizon way, way far back there. Today's a pretty good day because you can see it hazy blue way back there. And if I get the airplane level here, and uh, we'll, again, we'll check and make sure we're trimmed pretty good. So if I take my hands off, I got a, just a touch of nose up there. So I'm gonna bring about half a ball forward so that my trim stays good. I'm about uh, 2,650 feet or something like that. And I'm trimmed pretty good. So now watch what happens if I roll the airplane relative to the horizon and I don't do anything. So as I roll and I bank the airplane, there we go. Now that horizon starts to rise in the windscreen there. My nose is dropping because my lift is being divided up. So now if I roll back that other way, what I'm going to do is just add enough back pressure to keep the nose from dropping down through the horizon. So I'm not even looking at my altitude or my airspeed or anything. I'm literally just looking out here at the horizon. Of course, I'm looking for traffic as well. And I can manipulate how much back pressure I need so that I hold my altitude while I'm turning. Now keep in mind, I've got all this bank angle and I'm pulling back really hard on the yoke here to keep my nose from falling. So that means when I roll level, I got to relax that back pressure. Otherwise, whoop, there goes my nose way up and I didn't want to do that. So I got to balance those forces. But let's talk about one more thing before we head back in. So that is the coordination of your turns between the aileron input and the rudder input. Now we know that the rudder, is my pedals here, that yaws the airplane. There's a little bit of right and left rudder. You can see that nose. Ooh, that's the one that makes everybody sick. Well, the purpose of the rudder is to make sure that we coordinate the turn because if I don't, what happens is the way that these ailerons work is when I roll the airplane to the left, right, one of the airplanes goes down and one of the airplanes goes up. You know which one it is? Remember the thumbs. Thumbs up. So my left side aileron is going up and the right one over there is going down. Now as it happens, whichever side of the ailerons is going down, it actually creates more drag than the one that's going up. So as a consequence of that, the airplane tends to want to yaw to that uh, to that direction where you got the extra drag. Think about like having a, an army tank or a caterpillar where you're driving using differential braking. That's basically what happens. So watch the nose. See that high mountain way out there in the background? If I roll the airplane to the left without actually touching the rudders, I got my feet on the floor now, you will see that as the airplane rolls to the left, the nose will want to slide over there to the right. Let's try it on three, two, and one. That nose went right. Now the airplane finally begins to turn. We'll go back over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, except instead of rolling the airplane to the left, I'm just going to use the input of the rotor. And what you're going to see is the nose is going to slide to the left. So here we go on three, two, and one. Okay, now when, the, when I yawed to the left like that, it skidded the airplane around, which means that right side wing was moving faster than that left side wing, so eventually that skid also turned into a roll or a bank, okay? So what I really want to do is balance the input of how much rudder and how much aileron I'm using so that if I'm looking at a point out there off the nose, it looks like the airplane just pivots on that point. If I use too much rudder, the nose of the airplane will slide in the direction I'm going, off my point. If I don't use enough rudder, then the nose is going to slide to the other direction, but either way, it's off my point. So what I want to do here is as I roll the airplane to the left, I also add left rudder just enough to make it look like the airplane is just pivoting on that point. So using that mountain out here, here we go. On three, two, one, we just pivot, and then there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to pivot back, and we're having a little bit of fun here. But as I do that, here we go. We're level again. Nose is level on the horizon. 
So there I am. I'm going to roll to the right with right rudder and right aileron at the same time on three, two, and one. And you can see we just kind of roll about that axis there. So there you go. That's the, a way that you can test to know if your trim is set correctly and if you're using enough rudder to effectively uh, use your turns correctly. So now as I head back towards the airport, I'm going to use the trim that I've got here, reduce my power to start a descent. Down to 720, Mike, five miles to the south, going to be entering a left down for only three, two, how was you? So we're up here, straight across from the airport here, about oh, four miles or something. And so now that I took that power away, I'm holding back pressure. And that's slowing the airplane down. If I let go of the back pressure, the nose is going to drop, and it's going to try to get back to that same airspeed it was at before. But by holding the nose up, it's slowing the airplane down. So what I could do is now I can take my trim wheel and start bringing it up until I don't have to hold the back pressure anymore. Now, my vertical speed is effectively zero. It's bobbling around because it's windy today. But we're not climbing or descending, except now I'm at 115 knots instead of 130. That power setting is about, oh, 18 and a half inches there. And I can do the same thing. I'm going to bring it back to about 16 inches. The nose wants to drop, but I'm going to hold it up. And what that's going to do is slow the airplane down. And I'm going to not have enough back pressure to make it climb, but not so much that, uh, or, you know, enough that it doesn't drop the nose. So I'm staying at the same altitude, now about 105 knots. So I'm going to trim again. And what I'm doing is I'm momentarily letting go. And as I let go, I'm just watching the nose. Is it going up? Is it going down? That kind of tells me what I need to do uh, for my trim here. So I'm just kind of cruising out here to the north here, 100 knots, 2,700 feet. I need to lose about 900 feet. Mike entering left down from right three two. Okay, there's our buddy. So now what we're going to do is call that we're going to enter back in on the 45. We still have a thousand, eight or 900 feet to lose, something like that. We're going slow enough now that we can just do that. Five eight off the Yankee. We're taking to runway three two. Be straight out Lake Avenue. Okay, and then that will allow us to make it to our 1,800 feet, which is our traffic pattern altitude here at the uh, Lake Havasu Airport. So here we go. Lake Havasu, uh, Skyline 74, Tango Papa's 2,500. We're about a five mile 45 to the downwind for runway 32, Lake Havasu. And so I got about 500 feet per minute of descent rate going there, 106 knots. I don't have to fly max power, max speed all the time. I can slow down, give myself time to think, and control my rate of climb or descent just by using my power. So I'm going to get myself pointed over here towards that 45. I'm 2,300, so I have 500 feet to go, losing about 500 feet a minute. So now that the airplane's trimmed for this airspeed, which is great for my pattern work, instead of blasting through the pattern like I got full afterburner on, all I'd have to do when I get to my altitude that I want to be at is set my power back to where it was before I started this exercise, which in this case I think uh, probably about 18 or so inches will work just great. So, we're on a 45, we're 3.9 miles out, we're looking for traffic, we should have a King Air on the upwind. He's going straight out, so it should be no factor for us, but we're going to look anyway. Then we got a Diamond Star, I believe it is, in the downwind, probably about to turn base. So what we're going to do in the downwind is we're going to fly parallel to the runway, and that's a pet peeve of mine. A lot of people fly either divergent, flying away from the runway, or convergent, getting closer to it. We want to be parallel to the runway. And so uh, we'll have a heading that p keeps us the same distance from the runway. I like to be about a half to three quarters of a mile or so. There's our king air on the upwind. And then what I want to do is control my airspeed so that I'm, you know, 80, 90, 100 knots, whatever you feel comfortable with, depending on what kind of airplane you're flying. And I'm going to do my before landing checklist. In this, in this case, I'm going to do gums. That's gas, undercarriage, mixture, props, seatbelts, and switches. So there's our Diamond Star on base. We're 1,950, so 150 feet to go. And I was driving King Air 5 Alpha Yankee. We're three miles north of the field, 4,000, climbing to Pine Area, northwest of uh, Lake Avenue. All right, so... Abbasu traffic, Skyline 74, Tango Papa is turning left downwind. Sorry, we're turning left downwind, runway 32, Lake Havasu. Okay, so I'm about 100 feet to go, and when I'm about 50 feet to go, I'm going to make my power change. That way I don't sink down below my altitude and I don't balloon way above it again. I'm parallel to the runway. I'm 1,840 feet now. So my heading is about 143145. Based on the wind, that seems to be keeping me about 143 there, parallel to the runway. So, gas is on both. My undercarriage, the wheels are down and locked, and my valve flaps are open. There's my altitude, so I'm going to set my 
power back there about 18 inches. That should be enough to hold me level. And look, I didn't trim. I can make very simple changes. So mixtures, props, seatbelts, and landing and taxi lights are on. So I'm now ready for landing. So when I come up to the uh, beam the numbers on the runway, all I gotta do now is reduce my power and add whatever I wanna add for flaps. In this case, I'm gonna set my power to 12. I've got about 99, 98, 100 knots there. There we go, I'm gonna beam the runway. I'm gonna set my power to 12. Now, that's gonna make the nose wanna drop on me, so I'm gonna hold some back pressure so it doesn't put me on a roller coaster ride. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some flaps, which are gonna do two things. It's gonna add a little bit of lift, which makes the nose wanna balloon up so I can relax that back pressure now. It's also gonna add some drag. The purpose of the flaps is to add drag so that we can go down and slow down. So what I'm gonna do is go down here and grab a little trim because I wanna start slowing myself down where I was doing 95 or 100 on the downwind. Now I wanna be a little bit slower. I probably wanna be 80 or so here, maybe 70 on base and maybe say 60 or so on final. So now I'm 81 knots. I'm gonna go ahead, I can see the runway's about 45 degrees to my shoulder, so I'm gonna turn my base. Obviously traffic down at 0720, Mike gonna be taxiing off Alpha 3, gonna be clear of the runway here in about 30 seconds. Havasu traffic, Skyline 74 Tango Papa is left base, runway 32, Lake Havasu. Okay, so I'm 80 knots on base, and now what I'm gonna do is take my flaps from 10 to 20. Now this time it adds a little bit of lift, so that nose kinda wants to balloon up, and it adds drag, so I start slowing down. So I'm holding my pitch to give me the airspeed I want, about 70 knots here. If I feel like I'm too low, I can go over here and just squeeze in another inch or two of power. 66, 65, you know, I'm in the ballpark there, so I'm pitching for airspeed. That means if I want to go faster, I put the nose down. But if I put the nose down, well, geez, then I get closer to the ground. Well, if I don't like that, I just add some power. Havasu traffic, Skyline 74 Tango Papa is now final. Runway 32, Lake Havasu. Okay, now I'm going to land with just the 20 flaps today. So that means I'm going to pitch for an airspeed of around 55 or 60 knots. So I'm doing 66, 67, 68. I'm going to let the nose come up here a little bit. That'll bleed some of that airspeed off. And I have three red lights and one white light on my Vazzy. So as I climb now, I've got two and two. I'm looking pretty good. But I need to go down, so I'm going to hold my airspeed there by changing the pitch of the airplane up or down. I'm flying the attitude of the airplane to hold the airspeed and if I'm too high, well, then I just take some power away. If I'm too low, I'm going to have to add power. Right now we're looking pretty good because we're coming down. And we got two white lights and two red lights on the Vazzy. My speed is 63 knots for a target of around 60, so I'll just pitch that nose a little tiny bit up. Now look, I got the airplane trimmed, so I'm doing very little here. 62, 63 knots, something like that. The airplane's fine. I'm still well, well, well above the actual stall speed here for... Uh, 20 degrees of flaps, there's 60. And I still have two and two, so now I start transitioning to looking at the runway. Not too close in front of the airplane, and not too far down the runway, just about, I don't know, half a dozen of the little stripes there in front of where I want to be. And there's a big tendency for a lot of people to get to this point and want to dive for the runway. But what I'm going to do is start reducing the power as I get in close, so the airplane doesn't float. And I'm going to start increasing the angle of attack and just try to hold the nose landing gear off as long as I can and not let it touch. There you go, the main wheels are down. And look, I'm still holding the nose wheel up as long as I can until I run out of elevator. I'm still nose in the air. Now it just came down and I have not released the back pressure at all on that nose wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and break, but only in a straight line. I don't wanna turn and break at the same time because that tends to skid the tires. So now I'm gonna come off the runway here. I can start releasing some of that back pressure on the yoke. And we do that to protect the aircraft, to really use the aerodynamic braking of the airplane so we're not wearing out the uh, tires and brakes, as well as um, so that we make sure we don't land on the nose wheel uh, when we didn't really want to. Okay, so uh, we've exited runway 32. We're going to come to a full stop here, and then we'll do our after landing checklist. So after landing checklist, taxi and landing lights are out. Our flaps are identified the switch. We move the switch, then we check. Flaps identified, flaps coming up. I'm going to lean the mixture out for taxi, and I'm going to retrim for takeoff so that the next time I come out, I don't have a bunch of nose up trim in the thing. And there you go. Now we're ready to taxi back to the hangar. Hope you enjoyed that. See you on the next flight.